Hello everyone. Hi. Vidal, I can see you if you, if you can see it, my friend. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Thank you for being here. Uh, the panel right now will be about crypto investment fund, crypto hedge fund, investment funds and invested crypto. Ten years ago, when uh, this investment opportunity showed up, it was only one asset. And um, like the dilemma was not simple, but it was only two options. Either you buy, either you don't. And five years later, six, six years later, seven years later, a lot of crypto has been showing up, starting with Ethereum, Ethereum from the Ethereum platform in 2014. And now in uh, 2019, we have thousands of crypto. And I can tell you something about this thousand crypto is that you have like the shittiest investment opportunity in this thousand crypto and you have the best investment opportunities that you will never see. And to be able to assess if you are buying like the worst one or the best one, you maybe want to talk with the guys that I'm going to present you and, and the guys that we have been inviting today. So let's start with this panel and hopefully you will learn a lot about crypto investment. Please guys. Please show up. Okay, let, let, let's start with, uh, with, with, with maybe just uh, some of the background. Um, my name is Charlie, I'm CEO of Fortan. We are a market making firm in, in the crypto space. And, and today we're not here to, to talk about me, but about these folks. So I will let them just uh, give us some background about what, what you have done before launching, launching uh, your fund. Uh, because I guess when you are an investor, it's really important to, to understand and assess um, uh, what you've done before and why, why you are able to, 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 to make your own due diligence on project. And, and then what is your fund now? What are you doing now? Uh, hello, everyone. My name is Alexey Antonov. I'm from Moscow. Uh, I was in crypto space since 2016, probably invested in like 90% of uh, 2016's ICO, more than 30. Uh, and after that, I managed several ICOs. Uh, and uh, previous, all previous and this year, we are uh, managing a um, huge uh, crypto portfolio uh, using robots, uh, doing uh, every, uh, every kind of funky stuff like statistical arbitrage and quantitative trading and lots of, of other things, but we uh, have invested in several equities as well, uh, did a lot of due diligence ourselves, like packing projects and uh, invested and managing uh, our equity investments. So I know a thing or two about that. Thank you. Hey, everyone. Uh, thanks, Charlie and, and Wharton for organizing this, this great event, first of all. Um, yeah, my name is Fabio Federici. I'm the founder and CEO of Base58 Capital. We're an asset management and, and trading firm specialized in, in crypto assets. Uh, before this, I uh, started a company called Coinalytics that later became Scry and, and was sold in 2017 to Block. Um, we were doing analytics for, for Bitcoin, essentially analyzing um, transactions on, on the network. And yeah, that's how I got started in the crypto space back in 2013. Um, and yeah, went down the rabbit hole and, and here we are. And uh, after selling the company, we, I moved back to Switzerland and yeah, wanted to essentially build a bridge from for traditional investors to get high quality exposure to the space. So yes, we focus very much on uh, identifying protocols and, and projects that um, carry the values of what we think is most important, which is the decentralized aspects of, of this kind of, yeah new uh, type of, of assets and yeah on the trading side we work a lot on on electronic trading and, and market making thank you hi guys my name is lawrence i'm from germany uh, born and raised there um, from a family that has built various companies for various industries um, starting in the plastics industry uh, moving on to the automotive industry um, i joined that family business line after my university degree and at some point moved into private equity. And why I'm telling you this is because at some point I also started to build uh, a company in a new industry uh, by found being one of the founders of Blockwall, which is a 
an investment fund out of Germany uh, that invests in blockchain technologies in general. And why we set it up was because there was a thriving demand from professional investors to firstly understand and secondly get exposure to this asset class. And in light of that, we screened the whole world to see like what structure really helps this target group to take part in this. And ultimately, we uh, set up a regulated fund out of Germany. Uh, we raised a first fund uh, 2017 until beginning of 2018. Started investing, um, primarily focused on infrastructure, protocols. Uh, in other words, I'm being very general right now because I was told the audience um, uh, requires a bit of broader uh, intro. So we're investing in everything that makes this whole technology work. So we've done that and we're receiving a lot of demand from more investors to get access to this. And that's why we're currently setting up a second fund that is also focused on any and all business models that this technology can enable. And this is really the core of our work. We look at where this technology really makes sense, and in most cases it does not. But where it does make sense, it's a very interesting uh, investment opportunity from our point of view. So if you had to sum up what we do, we're, we provide venture capital to business models that are based on or that are in an integral part of this technology. Hi, my name is Cyril Paglino. I'm French, I'm based in the US Silicon Valley since five years. Over the past 10 years, I was an entrepreneur, so building products with mostly engineer, uh, most of the time consumer product, been raising money in France and the US for my previous companies. And I would say five years ago, I came across Bitcoin first and then blockchain product, starting investing in uh, as an angel in normal and traditional companies, but also blockchain companies. And since two years almost, uh, general partner at Starchain Capital. Um, we are based in the US, but opening in French office in the next few weeks. And we invest in decentralized protocols, blockchain-based assets, whether it's equity or tokens, basically. Okay, s s thanks a lot for, for, for this uh, intro. Um, maybe just for, 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 I mean, this is also the code asking, uh, Fabio, I think, could you please uh, define and, and tell us wha what we could mean when we, when we say investing in decentralized organization and uh, especially explaining the decentralized organization part for people to understand what we're talking about. Yeah, I think we were kind of discussing it back backstage earlier, right? And I think it's it's a relatively broad question because I think on this panel things start with like something more, let's say, mature like like Bitcoin at the end of the day, where we have a protocol, but we have different stakeholders from the people owning it, um, the miners, the the developers that participate. So all these kind of form part of, of kind of the Bitcoin quote unquote organization, even though there's no central party. But I think the other thing would be more decentralized organizations that are governed, let's say, by code. So I think we have um, examples of that with things like um, obviously the original DAO uh, back in 2015. We have things like Melonport. Um, I think Uniswap is probably the most uh, or the latest uh, example of that where there's not even necessarily a token where you can invest in so that really kind of changes the game for investors in the space right because there's no company there's no equity there's not even a token in this case so the question becomes okay there is demand for this as asset allocators how do we participate there and at least what we think is that now the role of an investor also becomes the role of a, a participant right it's not just passive allocation of capital, but you need to uh, potentially perform some sort of role or job as part of these networks to actually get exposure and, and participate in, in the value accrual of, of these systems. Okay, okay. S thanks. Uh, Alexei, uh, you uh, wanted to add something? Yeah, I think to, to make things simple for audience, we can think of decentralized organization as an uh, organization which part of which you own by owning digital property. So it's uh, uh, it can be decentralized in many ways in terms of governance, in terms of product development, in terms of uh, value distribution. But uh, the main point is, uh, I think we all, uh, 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 we all are investors in uh, some digital property. Yes? And, and, and um, I mean, just to, to follow up on this, Cyril, you, you've been before before being in the crypto space. You 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 had a company. You raised uh, you raised capital with one of the best VC in the world. Now you're investing in crypto. I mean, how do you assess a pro like what metrics are you looking at when you when you invest uh, sure. in, in a project like that? Sure. So first, on a big picture, I think we're um, witness of a big industrial revolution right now. Um, every assets will be digitalized in the near future and. 
the meaning of that is that transfer creation issuing will be way faster, more cheaper, way more secure. So on this whole transition, I was really excited to be part of it and to just you know bring more people into crypto and funding project and trying to explain what this is all about basically. So first was excitement of, okay, I'm 32 years old now. I missed the bubble 20 years ago. I was too young obviously. And I think it's that big on a good way, not the bad meaning of it. And I think it was just obvious for me to stop being an entrepreneur in the consumer product and you know, taking the blockchain and embrace it, saying that it's going to be very big in the next 10 years and I wanna be one of the people that have been helping this whole movement to go further. So it was more a passion thing. Uh, than a money thing at the beginning. Obviously, money and career is also is also a big part of it, but it was just like a yeah, lo like a moral thing to do basically. So I was I was just like attracted by this. And and I, I think the four of you have been investing both in equity and token, uh, including you, Lawrence. Um, from what I understand from the first answer, we are not talking about e equity investment, but you've all uh, done some equity investment. How would you defer this kind of investment? Why, why would you invest in a token rather than an equity allowance? And what are you looking at to make this deci decision? That's an excellent question to uh, help me also comment on the previous uh, uh, stuff that was said. Uh, because when you, when you, I mean, as an investor, whether it's your own money or other people's money or both, you have a fiduciary uh, responsibility to make a sound investment. So for the first part is to come to a decision whether you want to invest or not. And when it comes to these decentralized technologies, as it was said before, you have this token. There's not necessarily a particular leader. There's not a particular the diligence that you can do from a regular point of view. But nevertheless, there are factors that influence the current development and most importantly, whatever value can be generated from it once it can be used, I'm meaning that technology. When it comes to equity investments, which in many cases makes sense as a legal structure or at least investment structure, it is very simple to how a VC investor today is evaluating whether he wants to invest or not. With the addition to define and uh, make a decision on whether this underlying technology that he's using is relevant for this application or not. So. Having said that, when we look at investing in this, whether we want to invest in equity and token, the answer is quite simple. A token really only makes sense in a very narrow field um, where the use case and the, the, the value added can only be generated if you have this decentralized uh, infrastructure, uh, where Bitcoin and Ethereum are two examples of that. Uh, when it comes to business models in general, you rarely find a, a token model that makes sense taking out all security token um, setups. I'm now talking only about this decentralized nature of utility token. So this differentiation is very important and where you could see that this importance has not been there was in 2007 when you saw a lot of crowdfunding activity based on Ethereum called ICOs where people were misusing uh, a decentralized structure, creating utility token where there really was no utility for it. So. At the end of the day, uh, coming back to what I was saying in initially, you have, as an investor, you have a, du a fiduciary duty and you need to understand what you invest in because only if you understand, you should put money in. And um, doing this job is, I mean, your team has to have a skill set that is very broad. We are talking about very early stage investment, but we are also talking about investments that can be liquid right after you invested in it. And then we are more talking about a secondary market, maybe some trading skill set that you would need in the coming months, coming years, when, when your, your, your investment become liquid. How do you manage this, uh, Alexei or, or Fabio? Because uh, I, I know you both have some algorithmic or, or trading strategies. Yeah, I think like the way we look at it, there's like, I mean, three main categories. So we have the more fundamental approach where we say, okay, like these are projects that we want to have long term exposure to because we think that they will be more valuable in the future. So there's literally more like a, a due diligence process and then deciding, okay, why, why would do we want to hold this in the portfolio? The second part is is the trading portion of it. So right now there we focus more on market neutral and market making strategies. So we connect directly to different exchanges, um, and then yeah, just trade essentially based based on that. And the third portion, which is something we are very excited about, it's what we call network investing. Other people call it generalized mining, mining 2.0, which is essentially 
participating in networks to generate uh, a yield or returns, and that's a way to um, protect um, your investments as well. So one example where we were probably one of the first 10 people to become part of the network was in, in Tezos. So we have been uh, baking Tezos um, for over uh, for almost a year now. Um, and yeah, that generates uh, a yield. It, it protects our investments in terms of against dilution. Um, but at the same time, it requires you to have um, either a partner or in our case, like in-house engineering that um, yeah, allows you to set up this infrastructure and, and operate it on, on a daily basis and make sure that um, everything is running fine. So that's also what we see as an opportunity to, to differentiate from, let's say, more traditional asset managers or investment managers that yeah, just don't have these capabilities in-house. And we see that as one of the biggest opportunities, to be honest, in, in the space. To make it uh, a little bit educational, I agree on that uh, part with engineers. And uh, uh, let's differ, differ the types of projects which you can invest in. Uh, there is equity-only projects, which are uh, not basically coins, but something blockchain-related, like an exchange, uh, a wallet, some service company. You can invest in that kind of companies. There is a token-only project uh, when you can't invest in uh, equity. What was back in the days, like 2016, 17, when can, you can only purchase something through the smart contract. Uh, we did that. Uh, afterwards, in 2018, uh, it was shifted from uh, the ICOs like we invested in pre-sale stage when the ICO market crashed, the ICO failed, and when we got an equity in our hands because they tried to transfer our previous investments in some equity kinds of stuff. And after, uh, let's say, the end of 2017, after the, the bubble was the most uh, we started to invest in equity uh, at the same time when we invest in ICO tokens be because uh, you need to be protected, you need to have some kind of control. So if you can invest in tokens and also in equity, you should definitely do that. It's the optimal strategy. And now you probably won't invest in tokens at all without any equity because even if it's some uh, security token offerings or that kind of stuff, you will be investing in equity and you want some paper because the uh, utility token idea become nonsense in terms of company governance. Thank you, thank you. Um, no, no one is going to escape my, my next question. I'm sorry, guys, but um, um, we've seen you, you've said you've said earlier that you have been invested in 90% of of the of the ICOs that happened in 2016. We have been seeing like billions of USDs have been raised uh, in in 2017. What what's the next investment opportunity in this field? I mean, uh, are we like can I say to to, to people that ICOs are dead or, or what, what 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 would you say, Cyril? I don't know. I think crowd crowdfunding for companies with a good idea. There is maybe new form that are being like on the way. Maybe STOs or something new gonna come. At Station Capital, since maybe two years now, we are more and more comfortable doing equity rounds than token rounds, basically, um, for the rights and the protection, of course. But also because security tokens was a nice idea at the beginning. But if you look at it now, ask the question: Can it be ether replaced by these native tokens? And most of the time, it's yes, basically. So most of the time, I, I tend to think that in the future, UTT token will be less and less um, use, like used, basically. And I think securities token or equity will be more dominant. It's just my view, and I may be wrong. But And also, the space is forming and evolving in every like month right now. So, so it's moving. But on all of deals since like 18 months, I would say 85% to 90% has been equity deals or equity plus tokens, but, but really rarely just tokens. Can, can I add something to that? You have to. Thank you. Um, what, what we haven't covered so far, which I think is also one of the very important aspects about investing into this technology, I mean, you should look, look beyond investing into this technology because if you think about gold mining, people had to use something to get this gold out of those um, mountains. And same for this technology. You need companies like Charlie's, Wharton, that is a proper... Uh, set up Thank for you. trading and liquidity. You need correct data companies that can provide you sound and uh, reliable data that you can base your trading strategies, for example, on. Y there's a lot of, f let's say, ecosystem-relevant companies that are necessary for big money to come in. 
For example, we as a regulated investor, we will only buy and sell our assets that are liquid with a, another regulated entity like Wharton, for example, because we don't want to take a chance of acting uh, with a bad actor. So there's a lot happening at the moment, and if you screen a bit what's happening on uh, in crypto media, there is something happening, like big institutions are setting up infrastructure for big money to really participate in this very, very young market. And so from an investor's point of view, there's a lot of very interesting opportunities at this current stage that are both available right now, but also necessary for this technology to find proper ways into adoption, whether it's with corporations, with retail users, whatsoever. So this is a, a very important point that I wanted to stress. Fabio, do you, do you want to add something to, to this question? Yeah, I, I think like for us, at least at Base 58, like we don't necessarily invest in equity at all like our focus is like purely on the crypto asset side and we just see because uh, as um, Lawrence was saying it's a very young and immature uh, market we see a lot of inefficiencies that we using kind of yeah kind of our skill sets we believe we can have like an edge in terms of capturing these inefficiencies and generating returns essentially for for our investors but yeah we see that more in kind of the the active participation in these crypto networks rather than let's say investing in equity of of let's say service related businesses that are not like core protocols in that sense so you, you want to yeah, no, something? totally agree with what Lawrence just said regulation is a big topic here yeah, yeah. I think we cannot evolve in this market without it on the investor side and customer side basically um, it's a new asset class it's actually being born right now since few years we need you know um, big corporation companies bank um, everyone being secure and comfortable investing or working or using this product basically so regulation is of course a, gr a great thing we are currently opening the f like one of the first in France and in Europe um, regulated uh, asset management company um, with a passporting like European passporting so we can collect uh, money in Europe. Since 18 months, it was only in the US for us, and I was just only based in San Francisco. And now we're opening this French office, and the idea is reinsuring um, French or European investors that are really curious about the sector, but it's a bit early for them to go. And so I think the next few months will be We'll see more institution, uh, ETF coming maybe in the next few months or, or maybe in coming years. And that will bring more money to the market. And what we need for this revolution to really happen is, of course, talents, media, and, and money, obviously. So that's really key for me to evolve. So so because we are in France, so we cannot escape regulation. We cannot do a panel like this and, and not, not talking about regulation, believe me. Um, so, uh, Lawrence, you, you, you said, I mean, you, you are regulated in, in Germany. Uh, um, Cyril, you, you just brought the subject of a regulation, guys. Do, do you see it as a threat or an opportunity for, for this field? And I'm not talking only about your fund, but also for the project, because uh, they have been facing so many hurdles and issues about that. Well, as a, if I were to put myself in a project's point of view, and I had to go out and raise money to enable my project, I mean... You, of course, you can find some mon money around your family and friends, but to find proper money, you need to have a structure where investors are comfortable putting money in. Unless it's something they are just uh, taking a chip and see what happens. But usually, you, don't f you rarely find these type of investors. So in light of that, it's a, it's a bit of an evolutionary point of view that, that, that we can see here. Is it's, w it's a chicken and egg problem, essentially. So yes, we need regulation, but at the same time, the re regulation is not as quick as projects are evolving. So from an investor's point of view, again, obviously it's an arbitrage decision to see, like, is this project at its current state in a framework that may fit a potential future regulation the way we see it or other countries have shown it and are leading the way. France, for example, is also very, uh, very advanced in that point of view. So, yes, it is very important. And, yes, you need to consider it. And you should not just say like where regu regulation is no problem, we're a centralized tech not decentralized technology, the SEC will eventually say we're a commodity. This is not a bet that any investor would or probably should take, uh, in my point of view. Yeah, I think like at these early stages, right, where, I mean, most of the, the projects that we see today, they're still very centralized in, in these early days. So they probably are not going to be able to escape. But uh, essentially for the way we look at it, um, Yes, eventually, like projects that are actually managed to become decentralized, 
if regulation is a problem, then they fail to be decentralized, right, at the end of the day, because um, then it means that they can be attacked by, by a single point of failure, which yeah, contradicts the point of decentralization. So I think in the early days, there's just, it's important while there is like, let's say a team or um, a group of people that control the development of the project, I think, yes, they should be um, held accountable for that. Um, but uh, I think, yeah, something like um, Ethereum could be uh, a good example, right? Where we had like this early phase where essentially people had um, a file um, that was the only uh, quote unquote contract that they had, right? And if the l project never launched, I don't think they would have had a lot of recourse in terms of protection of, of their investment or anything. But um, once it launched and now, um, at least to, to the SEC, it's sufficiently decentralized. Um, I think that's another topic we can talk about for hours in terms of how we de define decentralization and um, what does it actually mean, right? But I, I think there is like this evolution on, on this, let's say, um, decentralization scale where, yes, uh, the more to the centralized point and the earlier you are in the protocol, the more important uh, the regulatory part is, um, at least on the project level. And then on the investment level, yes, I believe it's, it's important to give um, LPs or, or investors the reassurance that the people managing the money yeah, know what they're doing and, and follow the rules, right? Because that I think it's going to be a long time before before we can replace quote unquote a lot of these functions with with decentralized um, projects essentially like w one example I mentioned before was Mellonport right where you can maybe say uh, the risk management or or the audit or the function of a, of a fund administrator can be actually replaced by by smart contracts and yes you need to trust less into the whole setup. So maybe regulation becomes less important because at the end of the day, what we want what regulation wants is to protect investors in the case of, of management, right? And so if today this means you need to trust the, the parties that are involved. And if we can yeah essentially remove some of that trust from, from the setup, it makes uh, life easier for, for investors and regulation may be a little bit less critical, but I think we're uh, a long way until we get there. I, I don't think we're that far away, if I may just jump in on that. I mean, we've seen it in our work with the OECD that there's really two points where regulation is very active and where most work is put into. First one is where fiat money, euro dollar, is being exchanged into crypt, uh, crypto and backwards. So companies like, like uh, yours, Charlie Wharton, you're one of the prime regulatory uh, aspects that's being looked at. The other one is w retail investor protection. So the whole ICO space from 2017, this was fully unregulated, 99% out of, uh, far away from retail investors protection. So this is really, if you look at what's happening globally, where regulation finds its base in order to protect retail investors into how can I raise funds, how can I sell this, whatever this, is, whether it's a token or equity. So those laws are being uh, applied to this technology and the companies that are being formed around it or protocols as well. And the, uh, the regulatory about um, KYC, AML issues that mostly arise only when it comes to raising funds or trading at the end of the day. So there's a lot happening and I mean, what, what, what your example on Ethereum, this started many years ago when most regulators did not really look at it. So they've advanced, they've advanced very quickly. They're very eager to make this technology accessible and being used in the future. And that's where most energy is being focused on. KYC AML and retail investor protection. Uh, to uh, to make it a, an investment uh, strategy <laughs> first, uh, I want to add that uh, yes, on that all that regulation things, uh, you can think of it that way. Uh, now the trust is an issue, and the exchange became so 
major and powerful because uh, you can't control what's inside. You can't. Uh, you don't know how many, uh, how really, uh, how much money we really have. We, you don't know what we do inside of uh, their backend, and we uh, can do and we do uh, nasty things. <laughs> I know that. Uh, it's it, it. You can see it from the outside. So we are thinking of it like. Uh, that exchange, unregulated, centralized, uh, that we got now, we should be uh, gone. And there is two way uh, that the situation can go. Uh, we put our bets on both of that. Either they become regulated uh, by uh, there is only one, unfortunately, regulation in our industry. It's U.S. regulation. Uh, and uh, either they be uh, U.S. regulated, and you should bet on that uh, U.S. Uh, citizen money structure and create firms uh, properly structured here. Uh, and the other bet, which we also uh, try to pursue with our money, is decentralized finance services, as not only in exchanges, but uh, the loan services, the custody services. Uh, we think that uh, at some point people uh, became tired of the exchanges and of all that things that happens there and uh, moved to uh, either centralized, uh, regulated, either decentralized financial institutes. S still with you, uh, Alexei, I'm glad you, you bring the exchanges uh, subject because we've seen like the, uh, recently some IEO, initial exchange uh, offering. I feel like if, if, if you let me give, give my opinion just for, for, for one question, I feel like we are centralizing more again like uh, an asset that took its value from its decentralization. Uh, so ex exchanges represent billions of volume, uh, uh, like an, of an asset, as I said, that took value from its decentralization. What do you think about about this new trend? Do you think it's sustainable? Do you think it's just like a buzz and and they will make money out of it for for maybe six months and then it we will we will move to something else? My favorite uh, exchange is uh, Bitmax, and Bitmax CEO uh, uh, named their clients degenerate gamblers <laughs> on the record. So. <laughs> <laughs> that's the very funny thing, and that's uh, not far from truth, uh, all that EO thing. Besides that, uh, we managed one ourselves, but <laughs> raised half a million in two minutes, but uh, that's a basically a casino. And you don't really know what happens inside, and it's all super manipulative. It's uh, far more manipulative when, when we got a... Uh, real smart contracts, which was audible and transparent, and uh, that probably couldn't end well, <laughs> but we don't know uh, exactly what time and uh, what bubble it will bring to the market. Yeah, I think it's just, it feels like the natural evolution of, of the, the ICO bubble. Um, I think what I'm more excited to see is like, what are go what's going to be like the quote unquote decentralized way of raising money, right? So we saw the first example in 2015 with the DAO, which yeah ended terribly, but I think it showed us um, a way of once the technology becomes more mature and more stable, there's going to be the same happening again. Like people are going to be raising money um, in a in a smart into a smart contract where yeah there's no necessarily a legal entity be behind it and so that's i think what's gonna be the next bigger wave but it's hard to say when when that's gonna happen S thanks a lot we, we we have two minutes two minutes left um, um I, I promise i was not going to to ask a tricky question i was lying um i'm, I'm sorry guys but now you're here you 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 cannot leave um more seriously um in the coming months, coming years, if, if, if there is one field you would like to focus on in terms of investment, what would it be? And if there is none, um, would you just be like more um, like opportunistic uh, in the coming months? I think it's always global. We are still at the stage where we need more infrastructure at every level and in many industries. So we don't look at one specific topic. Um, we try to be broad and to try and capture value on pieces of the ecosystem that are missing right now. So to stay very vague, um, anytime we see something that will tr help moving forward this whole ecosystem, we try to you know, contact, reach out, discuss, and if there is an opportunity, we just try to invest, basically. Thank you me. just talked about Gold Rush before. 
we try to invest in all the tools that make people dig gold better and faster, basically. I, full, I fully agree. And adding to that, there's um, also an, um, this aspect about proper corporations, not proper corporations, large corporations around the world, literally exploring uh, their process landscape, how they transact today, how they make their business, how they're set up. Take a company like Google, they look at what, where's my value being generated, where do I have dependencies and where I don't have them. And these are corporations that are more and more looking into what are the use cases that I can have from these uh, blockchain technologies and how can I use them for the me are they relevant? Are they a threat? Are they an opportunity? And based on that, what we see and what we uh, see coming in the next years is that to bridge that between those old, old mean uh, uh, senior, senior corporations and a young technology to really see that convergence into proper adoption. And we see a lot of opportunities that will enable that to happen. Thank you. Sa sa thanks. thanks a lot. I mean, um, it's really hard to have honest in, uh, answer from investors, and I think we managed to do it. And I think people would love to ask questions. We, we are not going to do it right now, but this afternoon we are going to do like an Ask Me Anything session where some of these folks will be and, and another fund called uh, Workaway Capital. And, and uh, I think if you have questions that you want uh, to ask, uh, it's this afternoon you, you have to be there to, 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 to just ask anything you want to ask, and you've seen they are, they are being transparent, so feel free to, to ask, like, you know, not non-convenient question. Thanks a lot, guys, and uh, thank you. have a good Thank afternoon. You. Thank you, Charlie. Thank you.